All right, we are officially in Countess. So first things first, get a look at this hotel room. I honestly wasn't expecting this nice for the cost. But super clean, really nice and light, fun color scheme, got a large bed, TV. I mean, this place is pretty top notch. Nice view of the street. And they even gave me a little candy, which I love. I always love a candy. So, off to a good start. We're going to go see what I can see today. A lot of this stuff is only open on Tuesday, so I've got a semi late train out of here. It should help. Yeah, get to it. So, we start our exploration of Countess in front of St. Michael the Archangel Church, which is a Greek Orthodox church, as you can tell by the domed roof. Um, and the reason we start here is one, it's close to the hotel I'm staying at, and two, over to our left is Freedom Avenue, which is one of the main drags in Countess. So, it seems like a good enough place to start. I'm not exactly sure if we can go in right now or not, unfortunately, because many churches are closed on Monday. One thing I did want to point out is, well, the church is amazing, uh, and it has all those fun features that Greek Orthodox churches have, you know, very ornate, dome roofs and all that. It does look, as you get closer, like you could use an update on the paint job because it's looking a little bit worn. Still very pretty though. One thing I'm finding about this particular color scheme for a church is that it reflects light like nothing else. I've almost blinded myself trying to stare at the church with the sun reflecting off of it. So uh, wear sunglasses or something when you come here. Unlike me, my goofy hat, which does very little to help in this particular uh, situation. I briefly went into the church, found out it costs money, and also that it is the Church of the Lithuanian Armed Forces. Um, so I didn't see anywhere to buy a ticket, and I felt bad just walking in if it actually does cost money, so didn't end up going in. Um, but yeah. Church of the Armed Forces, I guess. I don't even know what that means exactly. Uh, I have seen a lot of people in military regalia walking around, so maybe there's a military base somewhere around here. I guess that would make sense in this case, but yeah. We're now on Freedom Avenue as we walk away from the church. And I can just feel the freedom coursing through me. Apparently many of these buildings were originally built in the 18th century. Or is it the 19th century? That always confuses me the way they do that. I believe it's the 19th century, 1800s. That's what I meant. It seems as though the Baltics are the last place in Europe to have escaped the scourge of Starbucks. Um, that's not to say they don't have their own chain brands, so one very popular one, Vero C Cafe, so Truth Cafe, I guess. And another one you'll see around a lot is called Caffeine, simply Caffeine, so you know what you're getting there. Um, and also, instead of using Uber, I recommend using Bolt, uh, which is Estonian Uber, essentially. It costs a lot less, there are a lot more of them, um, and you can also use that app to use scooters if you'd like. I'm not a big scooter, uh, especially because I don't know the traffic patterns that well here and I really don't want to get hit by a car. Um, and you can also use it to order food if you're into that. The guy up there is Vitautus the Great, and he is, according to the people of Countess, the bee's knees. He was the Grand Duke of Lithuania back in the 1400s. And he was responsible for a lot of Lithuania's territorial expansion in that time. He fought with the Teutonic Knights, uh, Muscovy, so like the current present-day Moscow area. There was a group of people there who were sort of the proto-Russian state, fought against them. And uh, I mean, his name's the Great, so you know, they think pretty highly of him. And what we'll see today is that a lot of churches and landmarks here are named after Vitautus. So, it's a good name to remember.
Countess features a number of off-road courses. Something to give you a little practice mountain biking if you're into that. So right there is the Vitalis Bridge, which sits across the Neiman River, which is one of the two rivers that helps define Countess as a city. So where Countess Castle sits, uh, it's flanked on either side by a river, sort of on a peninsula. So one is the Neiman River, the other is the Neris River. So this is the Neiman one, where Vitalis the Great Bridge is. From where I'm standing, the river doesn't appear to be moving too quickly. It doesn't look too deep. You'll probably even walk across it if you really need to. But the bridge is probably a better bet. This is a bit confusing. So it looks like Vilnius University has like branch campuses. So we call them in the US. This is the Countess version of it, I guess. I don't know. What I did expect to see was Vitautis the Great Church, right next to Vitautis the Great Bridge. Are these people Vitautis crazy or what? Also, I hope that's how it's pronounced correctly because that'd be embarrassing at this point. Lithuania seems to have more of a love affair with brick than I'm accustomed to seeing in Europe. So if you recall, uh, a lot of the buildings we've seen so far have been red brick. Some more red brick over there. That's a museum. We'll head there next. And it looks like there's another church behind it, though I believe that's the one that's closed today. Location, location, location. So from the church, you can just walk straight down to the water. A little path up on either side. Almost just fell over. That's pretty amazing. They do a pretty nice job with lifelike statues. I've been scared multiple times thinking I was about to run into someone. Alright, let's see what we got here. Memorial of some sort. It appears I'm not going to be able to actually go in for some reason. I'm sure one of these signs on the door says something, but I am sadly not able to translate. So that's as much of Vitalis the Great Church as I think I'm going to be able to see, but hey. Can't complain, there's plenty to see in Countess, so if not that, we'll find something else. I believe this building is a House of the Blackheads type beat. Some sort of merchants. It's built in the Hanseatic style, so. Uh, it looks like it's open, so. Got to go in and see what's what. So we are standing now in one of the oldest houses in all of Lithuania. That's still standing. So it's that thing we saw from the outside. It was owned by some rich merchants who were part of the Hanseatic League. Got some fun music. But basically, after the uh, merchant's family left, it was passed around to a bunch of different religious organizations. Uh, most recently, the Jesuits, who currently own it. It was a Soviet museum at one point. A lot of history, this house. So this pink church over here is the Jesuit church that owns the merchant's house we were just in. Right in front of us is the city museum, which I will go to shortly. And there is the countdown clock for when Kaunas becomes Europe's cultural city for 2022. Um, so this is the center square. I believe that over there is the castle, though it may be the cathedral. I guess we'll find that out too. Somewhat off-puttingly, the lady at the last museum I was at 
said, uh, you should really be careful. There are a lot of sick people around. Which, seeing as I need very badly to not test positive for COVID to get back to the US, it's not exactly what I wanted to hear. But, say la vie. Contrary to what the internet would have me believe, the city museum was closed, so. Instead, we're gonna walk around down by the castle, which the internet claims is closed, and which might mean, I don't know, it's open, who knows. If the internet's been wrong once, it can be wrong twice, right? When you get off the main drag in Kaunas, you do find that it's a little ghost towny in parts. Now, I think that can be largely attributed to COVID. At least I hope it can, but it's a bit off-putting. Over here to our left is Countess Castle, which also is probably not open today, but I believe we can still walk around the castle grounds, even if we can't go in the actual keep. Looks like maybe during the summer or something like that, they'd be able to have concerts out here. And of course, we have our friend Vitautis, looking heroic as ever on his horse. Over to our right is the Neris River. So that's the other river that encircles the city. Over here, looks like there's another stage set up. Could have performances down the castle in the background. Nice little amphitheater. Sometimes I really do not get art. So far, and I hate to hate on Kona, I've only been here for couple hours now but it is a distant second city to Vilnius because frankly Vilnius might be my favorite city I've been to on this trip um, Countess the issue I think is mainly that a lot of things are closed because one it's Monday and two it's COVID and Lithuania is currently dealing with a bit of a COVID outbreak but still City's just it's not quite as charming as Vilnius. Though the water is nice. So the biggest reason for Countess's historic prestige is that it sits right at a junction between these two rivers, which are the two biggest rivers in Lithuania. It's the Niemen and the Neris. So basically any trade that you wanted to do in Lithuania, coming from the Baltic Sea, you had to come down these rivers. There's one, there's the other. Which means that this city is perfectly located to become sort of a, a trading, I mean not trading empire, but an important uh, trading post for goods being shipped even into Russia. Another angle on the castle. It's really not too big. Oh, I still wish I could see the exhibition inside. Maybe tomorrow.
was the Bernardine Church, originally built in the 16th century, and which shockingly did not have an entry fee and allowed me to film. So, two things you do not see at many churches. Well, allowance to entry is usually allowed, but usually you have to pay to film. All they asked for was silence, which seems fair under the circumstances. Now these are some classic Old Town vibes. Tiny street, buildings pressed up right against it. It's what the people pay to see. Apparently the left-wing anarchist movement is strong in Kaunas. Got some ACAB, Love Violence, Anarchy Sign. Just great, you know, classic graffiti, love it. Strong boobs energy. That one I actually haven't seen before, but. Since everything was closed in Old Town, I'm gonna head back to Freedom Avenue. I'm just trying to find something to drink. Because apparently Lithuania has a special way of brewing beer. And I can't remember if the sort of beer I had at the one restaurant back in Vilnius was the right type. So we're going to go find some, it's like farm brew or something, home brew, farm brew, non-boiled. I don't know, I didn't pay attention, but there is a special type. Uh, one of the highest rated restaurants in Kaunas is Virgin, which has meat donuts. So I'm going to give that a try. I assume it's just the donut stuff fried up and then oh, take a good look at that. That's pretty good. Not that much meat in it though. So the meat donut, shockingly delicious. Was not expecting how good it was going to be. As we got further into it, there was more meat. It must have fallen down a little bit within the donut. And it was a nice sweet and savory thing, great texture. I sort of wish I'd gotten a sweet one too, just because the meat one was so good, but I bet it would have gone really nice with like a nice jelly donut. Um, yeah, only 90 cents, so call that a win. Now, going to head back to the hotel, take a little nap because I'm tired, then we'll hit the town for dinner. Good morning from a genuinely very cold day in Kaunas. Whew. See the breath going. It's about 35 degrees. Very nice clear day at least, but going to start it off by getting the blood flowing, walking up a hill to see the very modern church that's at the top. Uh, I've been told it's one of the top things to do. There you go, we made it up the hill. That is the church. I think it's open today, so we should be able to go inside. But definitely get to admire it from the outside first, because it's pretty different looking. Space Church. I don't know what it's actually called, but in my mind it's going to be Space Church because it looks like a Space Church. As has been the pattern in Kaunas, church is closed right now. So I'm going to go ahead to the War Museum, which should be open. And uh, after that, it's time to go to the train station and get a train back to Vilnius for a final couple hours of sightseeing there. So join me as we try to figure out our way to the, I believe it's the Vitautas War Museum. More Vitautas. Outside of the War Museum, there is a shrine to various Lithuanian military leaders. So it lines the path just outside of the museum.
and there's the museum itself. Clock tower over here. So now it's 1010, which means the museum should have been open for 10 minutes. Well, I'm baffled. Museum says it should be open, but it's not, so there's nothing to be done about that. Forgotten how nice a mask feels when your face is cold, getting the hot air circulating. I don't know, I guess no museum, that was sort of the thing I had planned for the morning. Guess uh, go find some breakfast and hit the road. Not much else to do. I've had so many pieces of pie on this trip. Best one I've ever had, this spot. I'll put a picture of it into the video. I should, I forgot to take an actual video clip of it. Oh my God. I don't know what it's called even, which is gonna haunt me, because I want more. Um, but the guy only spoke Russian and Lithuanian, and unfortunately my Russian and Lithuanian are a little, uh, eh, so. Um, yeah, that, oh, that was so good. Really rich, not what I really should have had for breakfast, but, oh man, it's delicious. But yeah, that was Countess. Gonna head back to the hotel, grab my bags, head to the train station. Uh, overall, it's a little bit of a disappointing trip, just because things were closed. The city itself was really charming. Um, I just, I, I wish that I'd gotten to actually go in, you know, the castle and the museums, things like that. But such is life when you're traveling during COVID, and obviously I'm very lucky to be able to travel at all, so um, the fact that I have to put up with minor annoyances like a few museums not being open is, I mean, it's it's a really small price to pay um, for getting to travel the world, travel the Baltics, so. Um, still very happy to be here, happy I was able to go to Countess. Um, yeah, so that'll about do it. Gonna get back on the train to Vilnius. And then go to my new hotel, drop my bags, and see some of the sites that were closed on Sunday. Um, and then tomorrow, I'll check in for my flight, so we'll see if I make it through. <laughs>